And now from the great state of Louisiana, former Lieutenant Governor, former Secretary of Natural Resources, and now member of the Public Service Commission, the Honorable Scott Angel. Good afternoon, good afternoon, and let me take this opportunity to add my warm welcome to those of you from around the nation to the 18th great state of our union, a unique slice of America, land of les ailes bon temps roulé. That means let's let the good times roll, but indeed we much more than that. We are a slice of paradise where we can at the same time enjoy some of the best hunting, fishing, camping, and hiking on the planet, and yet proudly produce the energy to fuel this great country with an eye to perhaps reshaping the globe. We are not an either or state here in Louisiana because we believe our creator requires us to manage all of our resources in such a way to focus on improving the lives of all Americans. In our Louisiana, we get up every day and put on our steel toe boots and our hard hats often kissing our families goodbye and set out to do the tough work of exploring, producing, refining, and processing the energy to fuel the good old USA, baby. And a special thanks to each of you for helping us rebuild this world-class city some eight and a half years ago after the worst natural disaster ever hit our shores. One can see by moving around that block by block, by block and business by business and church by church and street by street, we are back as a vibrant American region, but we didn't do it alone. We did it with the help and the prayers and the financial resources of every state in this union. And for that, on behalf of a grateful state, I wanna publicly thank you for your efforts to restore a member state of these United States of America. Membership in this union has its privileges and its benefits. From my accent, from my accent, one can tell that I especially enjoy being here in New Orleans, sharing my thoughts with folks who are passionate about a strong domestic energy industry. And I'll share some thoughts. It's time for us to take back when it comes to energy here in America, reaffirming our belief that a strong domestic energy policy means a stronger, bolder, brighter, and freer America. It's appropriate. It's appropriate for us to gather here some six months before the midterm elections on this last weekend in May on the banks of the mighty Mississippi River to send a message to the banks of the powerful Potomac River that not on our watch, not this generation, will we allow regulation and taxation to lead to economic strangulation. Let me hear you. And what a heck of a run has been for us in Louisiana. We've gone from 2005 when oil was trading at $42 and natural gas was at $550. We watched oil go all the way up to $149 a barrel on Independence Day, July 4th, 2008. And we thought there was no end to those rising prices. Yet by Christmas of that year, we were down to 36. We saw it rise up into the 80s, bounce to the 70s, and now settle around 100. We witnessed natural gas peak at $13 for that same Independence Day in 2008, all the way down to $1.87 for Labor Day in 2009. And after flirting with $6 in 2010, we're bumping around $4. All this means something, I promise. Hang in there with me. But that's not all during this same period since 2005. Due to an imploding national economy, many of our went, states went from a billion dollar surplus to a billion dollar deficits, so many ups and downs, but that's not all. Here in Louisiana, we survived four major storms, Katrina, Rita, Gustav, and Ike. We've heard of carbon capture, cap and trade, climate change, global warming. We've heard of renewables, alternatives, hydrokinetics, wind, solar, biodiesel. In the fa past few years, we've gone from drill, baby drill, to oil spill, a top kill, a static kill, and a final kill. During these same few years, years, we witnessed the implosion of the automobile and the housing industry, financial markets at near collapse. We went from importing LNG 
to exporting LNG. We went from vertical drilling to horizontal drilling. We went from a moratorium to a permitatorium. We even learned a new phrase in America, too big to fail. But through it all, here in Louisiana, after 43 years in football purgatory, we finally got us a Super Bowl champion in New Orleans. Can I get a hallelujah or an amen? I love it when I can get Republicans saying hallelujah or oh, amen. I love it. From the energy side, I can tell you there's a revolution going on in America, but you already know that. Perhaps what you don't know is that it represents the number one opportunity to grow our nation's economy and improve our environment in ways not recently seen. You heard me right. I said we have an opportunity to grow our nation's economy and improve our environment those two things are not mutually exclusive. I know you know that since 2007, non-farm employment is down about 3% in America, while oil and gas employment is up almost 40%. Take energy employment growth out of the equation, and America would be in the ditch. It's nothing short of a game-changing seismic shift due to the perfection of drilling techniques and deep water technology. Perhaps, perhaps a seismic shift not seen in 40 years since the 1973 oil embargo in response to the U.S. support of Israel in the October war. Essentially banning exports to America and eventually Western Europe and Japan, resulting in a quadrupling of oil prices. That indeed was a seismic event in 1973. And I can tell you some 40 years later, Things are rumbling again, perhaps this time in favor of Americans. Because of private sector innovation in America exceptionalism, and not because of the government, but in spite of the government, we've gone from an era of scarcity and fear to an era of abundance and opportunity. This is not, this is not your grandfather's oil and gas industry. It's not your father's oil and gas industry, and things are changing so fast, it's not even your big brother's oil and gas industry. To put it, in, put it into context, when it comes to energy clout, America's going from the driver's seat, we got placed in the trunk, and yet we scratched and clawed our way into the front seat, and the challenge of this generation is to get back into the driver's seat. Today is the time for the White House to understand the golden opportunity that energy gives us in our economy here in America. We can create jobs. We can do what I call nation building right here at home. You know, the, the Energy Information Administration says things have changed so fast, quote, this is a remarkable turn of events. This is a new era of thinking about new market conditions and opportunities you wouldn't think about in a million years, unquote. What we need is leadership that understands, understands how fast things have changed. We need leadership that doesn't turn like an aircraft carrier, but leadership that turns like a speedboat. We've got an opportunity here in America. And just to further illustrate that seismic shift, in 2003, the number one economist on the planet, Alan Greenspan, chairman of the Federal Reserve, testified to Congress that we didn't have enough natural gas in America to fuel our economy and we needed to be all about importing LNG from foreign countries. Now, a decade later, because of private sector innovation, we are sitting on a 100-year supply of natural gas. Make no mistake, because of what is happening in the field of energy produ production due to this American exceptionalism and overcoming federal government bureaucracy, the energy industry is making America stronger while diminishing places like Libya and Iran and Iraq and Venezuela and Nigeria and Algeria. But we can do more and we must do more because through energy we have an opportunity to reshape the globe. The latest opportunity perhaps may be in Eastern Europe. Ukraine, tied to Russia, needs help from a natural gas standpoint. We in America can fill that gap. We just need a policy, a, a, a a White House that understands we can make a peace dividend through our natural gas, through our energy. That peace dividend is spelled P-E-A-C-E, -E, a peace dividend. Instead of putting our men and women, our young men and women in harm's way, I think we have an opportunity to bust the stronghold that Russia has on Europe 
And that's what, again, I call putting America first and helping nation building right here at home. And why is all of this important? Because you see, since 1972, we've had six recessions in this country. And each one of those recessions have been preceded by a spike in energy prices due to over-the-top regulation, due to federal resources not being made available, due to geopolitical concerns across the globe. Absolutely, as oil prices go up, so goes the downward performance of our economy. We are married to our climate control homes and our automobiles, and none of us are going back. None of us are going back to the days of no air conditioning, no, no heat. We often live in places that we do not work. But we can and must be that generation of Americans that executes public policy instead of these cycles of regulation, regulation leading to strangulation. In the meantime, creating thousands of jobs for our economy. No doubt about it. A couple things before I wrap up. Affordable energy, not necessarily cheap energy, but affordable energy is what led the way for development and expansion of America following World War II. Think of the huge automobile industry, the airports, the travel industry. Think of Disney World and Disneyland, all fueled by affordable energy. 75 million people visit Florida each year, everyone using hydrocarbons to get there. I'm reminded today that in 1950, Florida was ranked 20th among the states in population. And 50 years later, it was ranked fourth. How did that happen? It was transformed from simply a lovely paradise into an economic and electoral superpower through the single invention of one thing, air conditioning, all fueled by affordable energy. The Eisenhower Interstate System, the world's greatest eco economic development project, fueled all being fueled by affordable energy, giving rise, rise to growth job creation and improving the quality of life for every American. I'm convinced that the left wing views oil and gas companies as bad for America. I'm convinced there's a bias against oil companies that does not exist against the automobile industry, and yet a automobile industry that owes much of its success to a robust energy industry. This bias leads to negative impacts, not only to the boat owner, but the boat crew not only to the retail store owner, but the retail store clerk, not only to the restaurant owner, but the restaurant worker. While the top fifth of income earners spend 4% of their incomes on natural gas, electricity, and gasoline, the bottom fifth of earners spend 24% of their incomes on these essentials. It makes sense, Mr. President, for you to understand that energy, embracing energy, and doing the kind of things that this country is poised to do can create great opportunities, create opportunities for wealth, create opportunities to reshape the globe, and in a lot of ways, put people to work. Finally, as a kid growing up in South Louisiana, our family was all about the four R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, and religion. And I suggest that's a pretty good model even for today's families. And while never losing focus on those four R's, we need to make room for a little bit of discussion about the three E's. That is a balance of energy, environment, and economy. A balance that the left simply does not get. You know, when it comes to, I look around this audience, I certainly believe that everyone in this room enjoys a trip to the lake house, a day at the beach, a walk in the park, clean air and green grass, but again, Somehow that gets lost in our conversation. It's time for us to be that generation of Republican leaders that while we maintain our economic values and reclaim our environmental, to, environmental heritage, because after all, after all, it was Republican Teddy Roosevelt, the 26th president, that introduced environmental and conservation policy to America before it was cool. So we need to embrace that legacy that President Roosevelt gave us. And while we all ought to be and check the box for all of the above, energy from all of the above, let's get real. Let's keep the conversation real. America's not ready to get all of its energy from the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees just yet. We got to keep the conversation real, and that's our job to do that. Finally, I'm going to share 100 words with you. Came from a great, great person, and I'll reveal him in just a second. And as I read this, keep in mind, this was a, a message that was spoken some 34 years ago. 
And as I read it, tell me if you think we could be saying it today. Quote, large amounts of oil and natural gas lay beneath our land and off our shores. Untouched because the present administration seems to believe the American people would rather see more regulation, taxes, and control than more energy. We must not be thwarted by a tiny minority opposed to economic growth, which often finds friendly ears in regulatory agencies for their obstructionist campaigns. Now make no mistake, continuing, we will not permit the safety of our people or our environmental heritage to be jeopardized. But we are going to reaffirm that the economic prosperity of our people is a fundamental part of our environment. That's a balance of the three E's spoken by President Ronald, candidate then Ronald Reagan, as he was talking about the administration that he was running. Let's put our hands together for <laughs> President Reagan. And just to repeat a few things, we must not be thwarted by a tiny minority opposed to economic growth which often finds friendly ears in regulatory agencies for its obstructionist campaigns. Certainly applicable today. Some 40 years ago, after a few, few countries would collaborate and scheme to deny us our resources in the oil embargo of 1973, this country said never again will we allow foreign powers across the sea to put their foot on our throats. Instead, we put our foot on the accelerator, and we put great minds to work to create and innovate technologies to unlock resources. This return to greatness in energy production can be the remarkable bright light that serves to remind us all that American exceptionalism, exceptionalism overcomes all. The, the, our innovation works best when it's unbridled and free to soar with all of those who want to make our country great again. I'm convinced here in Louisiana and I'm convinced in America that our best days are ahead of us. I thank you for coming to New Orleans and being a part of the 18th great state. I think we ought to make sure that we do not cede the environmental space to the left. Again, after all, it was a Republican that introduced environmental concerns to America. We ought to be about energy. We have an opportunity to reshape the globe. We have an opportunity to create thousands of jobs, hundreds of thousands of jobs. It's time for regulation to step aside and let's let the free enterprise system in America that we know take root and soar. Thank you very much. God bless you and go rock the French Quarter. <laughs>